The time has finally come and our RTX 4090 unit has arrived in the office. Sitting in this box right here is the graphics card that Nvidia are touting to be the most powerful gaming GPU the world has ever seen. But is any of that actually true? Is this card as large, as heavy and as cumbersome as lots of the media have made it out to be? How does it compare size and aesthetics wise to the last gen 30 series? In this one, we'll be taking a look. Running through as well all the key specs and all the information we know about the 4090 because Nvidia have actually revealed quite a lot. Let's see what's inside the box though after a quick word from today's video sponsor. The Corsair IQ 5000T provides the ultimate in airflow, RGB lighting and mounting compatibility for PC builds in 2022. With three Allow fans included, 160 addressable RGB lights in the front roof and floor panels, Corsair have really taken things up a notch. Learn more about the awesome 5000T in our build videos over on the channel or at the where to buy links in the description below. Now then, it's time to open what I think we can all agree is quite a large box. I'm hoping there's going to be some packing material in here and that the 4090 is not this humongous because otherwise we could have a problem. Okay, here we go. Oh, this is very kind of like Apple-esque so far, right? Where the whole thing just like unfolds perfectly. The box is very large. Like the GPU is in this black box right here. Now the closest thing I've got to compare this to is a 3080 Ti box from the last generation. You can see it's significantly... Well, I mean, smaller in every single way by quite a margin. You could definitely stack a few of those in the same footprint, but it's what's inside that really counts. Now, one of the things I'm keen to get your guys' opinion on is the new font. I'm not 100% sure how I feel about the new NVIDIA font. I quite like the old one. It's been a staple of PC gaming for as long as I've been doing this whole YouTube business. Now then, the box looks kind of hollow from the... Here, I can put my hand all the way all the way through and they can meet in the middle. Oh, oh, maybe that's how we should unbox the GPU in today's video. Are you ready? So it looks like you open this up and the card maybe will be underneath. Oh my goodness, NVIDIA, what have you done? Wow. So off the bat, this looks like your typical 30 series founder's design. The actual general aesthetic and cooler design is very similar. You've got one fan on the bottom blowing air through the first kind of cooling heat sink or chamber, if you will, on the left-hand side. And then on the top, you've got another fan which is going to pull air once again from underneath the card and exhaust out the top. You'll also notice that we've got that same power adapter from last generation, but this time the biggest change is a three slot form factor. This thing is huge. Now, just how huge it is, is perhaps best demonstrated if I scuttle to the rear of my set and gather up an RTX 3080, 3080 Ti from the last generation. Take a look at the size of these two side by side. I would say the new card is maybe twice as thick. Let's let's be a bit scientific about this and actually find out. Yes, I've got the tape measure out. So the new card is exactly, uh, exactly 60 millimeters thick, six centimeters thick, shall we say? And then our old card is four. So the new card is actually 50% deeper than the old card. I've got to say it looks more like double, but as with all of these things, it's only 50% bigger in terms of its depth, but that has an exponential impact on the actual volume of the card in terms of its raw perceivable size. You'll notice as well a very slight color change. This one is, I would say, lighter and has like a kind of very slightly purple hue, but I'd say that's stretching a little bit. And if you look at the fans, there's obviously a big difference in the diameter of the fans installed. It looks like the central fan hub size is the same. If we measure the new one, that's actually coming out at, it's not an exact science, I will admit, about 11 and a half centimeters. That's 115 mil. That's nearly as big, if not basically the same size as a case fan that you'd put in the rear of a PC. If we take a look at the old one, yeah, I mean, look, eight and a half, eight and a bit centimeters is an 80 mil fan versus a 120 mil fan. And what that tells us is that these new GPUs run hot. And that's not a surprise when you look at some of the specs and power consumption, which we'll come on to in just a moment. Otherwise though, they've just taken the original design and scaled it up. You've just got more fins, but of the same pattern. This central sort of cross section is bigger. You'll notice they've got rid of the kind of dent in the middle and it's just a big X now 
now, which obviously is better suited to its size. If we take a look at the IO, that looks, yeah, absolutely identical. They have gone for a metallic finish this time on the PCI rear cover. But you've got three display ports and a HDMI on there as well. Otherwise though, I mean, my big takeaway from this is how heavy it is. This is one of the heaviest graphics cards I've ever weighed in my entire life. Let me pop some stats on screen. I'll bring some scales in, measure these out. But this feels 50%, double the weight of our RTX 3080, which is very, I mean, it's absolutely crackers really when you think about it. The best thing I can sort of describe this as is like one of those cards you got years ago with two GPUs in. It was like, I can't remember the model name, but they'd put two graphics card, two graphics chips in one unit. And that's the closest thing I can think to actually match this up to. One thing that I am a little bit worried about, and I can't see NVIDIA have included anything to help with this problem. It's very heavy. And that heaviness will result in weight on your motherboard's PCI slot. This thing is definitely going to sag. I mean, if you look at the length of it as well, you're gonna have trouble fitting this in standard cases. And remember, this is the founder's edition card, which is often smaller than the AIB models. So goodness knows how big some of those other GPUs will be. If we take a look in the box, you have actually got an included power adapter. Now, if I read online, NVIDIA's website says that it includes an adapter with three eight pin PCI power connectors. This one definitely has four. So whether that's maybe like a bit of a typo or they changed this last minute, I don't know. Obviously, this is not gonna look very good. It didn't look good in the last generation when there was two. I had 3090 Ti's with three. Four is obscene. So you definitely wanna pick yourself up a PCI 5 cable. An ATX3 power supply would be even better. I wouldn't scrimp out when it comes to PSUs on these new GPUs. And that brings me nicely on to looking at the specs and the power draw and all the hardware that could possibly require an enclosure this big for cooling. And of course, a 450 watt graphics card power rating. 450 watts! The first metric that really strikes out to me is the speed that this graphics card runs at. It's got a base clock of 2.23 gigahertz, boosting right up to 2.52 on this particular founders model. If you look at the 3090 and 90 Ti from last gen, they're well below two gigahertz. We're talking a 1.4 gigahertz base on the 3090 and a 1.76 gigahertz base on the 3090 Ti, making these cards essentially already about 50% faster on clock speed alone. And that's of course discounting the whole new architecture NVIDIA have got going on. The new GPU is set to support DLSS 3, which is hardware specific. So that's due to the hardware on these cards rather necessarily than an update on the existing tech, meaning it should have a very, very drastic impact on performance. I've said for a long time, but DLSS is possibly NVIDIA's smartest move ever because it puts them hordes above the competition and allows them essentially to artificially increase the performance of the graphics card using AI. But at the end of the day, the user doesn't really care where that comes from because it does result in a much better gaming experience with more frame rate, very little visual fidelity loss. We've covered it in a full article on the channel, which now I think of it probably needs updating to reflect DLSS 3. You have, of course, as well, got third gen RT cores versus second gen RT cores on the last generation, fourth generation tensor cores, another upgrade in terms of raw specs, power and hardware, advancing their AI tech. I mean, if one thing's for sure, NVIDIA have gone all in for AI on this GPU. The card also has 24 gigabytes of GDDR6X memory, which based on previous launches has been enough. I don't think any more than that right now is really needed. Plus, I mean, where do they go next? 30, 32 gigs? That's the same as like your system's DRAM. Pretty crazy. And although this is really good, I do know what a lot of the comments on this video are going to be. James, NVIDIA have replaced the 3090 with the 4090, but these new cards cost so much more money. Just how affordable are these to the mass market? Now, without sounding like an NVIDIA spokesperson, because that's not what we want to do as members of independent media, the 4090 isn't really a card aimed at gamers. The 3090 never was either. And of course there are gonna be gamers who always want the best of the best and are willing to part with that extra cash. Whether or not these cards are actually worth the price NVIDIA are selling them for, and of course thinking about it, the price premium add-in board partners like MSI, Gigabyte and Asus will also put on for their slightly fancier designs with water cooling and RGB, really depends on performance. We'll be looking at that, as I say, not right now. Sadly, we're not allowed. If I was to do so, I would probably get into quite a lot of trouble. Whether or not, as I say, it's really worth the price point is a whole nother conversation and based on benchmarks. And of course, these new top-end GPUs also set out the precedent for how the Lovelace architecture is going to perform. Nvidia may use this silicon in the most cost-effective and profitable way for them right now, but of course that will filter down to more budget cards as the architecture progresses. Whether that's going to be in the next few months or not is probably quite doubtful. I would expect the 4090 and 4080 to probably
probably be around for six months before they maybe launch anything else. But that also depends on the way the market goes and how many GPUs from 30 series are still left waiting to be sold. Either way though, I'm excited. I don't normally do unboxing videos and I don't think I have in a number of years, but I wanted to today because of course the 4090 is just that bit different. It looks at face value like a GPU we've just never seen before. Make sure you get subscribed and stay tuned for our full coverage, which will be coming very shortly. And hopefully for everyone's sake, for the sake of the architecture moving forward and future more affordable GPUs, this thing performs well next week, but only time will tell. Thanks for tuning in. And as always, we'll see you in the next one.